Yes, folks, it's day two of the Grand National Meeting. It's Ladies' Day. Welcome along to Good Morning Aintree with David Jennings, Paul Keeley and Jonathan Harding. And here is what's coming up on today's show. We're going to kick off with a review of yesterday. Day one was magic. From a, a tipping and punting perspective, it wasn't quite magic, but it was very enjoyable all the same. And of course, Epitant was terrific in the feature injury hurdle, although we were denied an epic duel up the run-in because Zanahir came down at the last. We're going to be looking ahead to today's action. Will John Bomb be top of the pops in the top novices hurdle? Four of a kind, that mile may. Oh my God, what a race, boys. Can't wait to preview that. Anyone for coffee? Mr. Coffee runs in the top of our old buddy, Keels. All right. Right. Can't wait right to talk. hear what you think. Oh no, right don't say it. Don't do it to me. <laughs> but before we get stuck into today's action, we have to look back, folks. Uh, Keels, first of all, the, the, the Pied Piper Night Salute race. Um, right decision by the stewards or wrong decision? I, yeah, you know, I think letter of the law, probably right decision. But I mean, you know, interference at the last flight or a last fence. I mean, how many times do we see horses knock heads at the last fence? Mm. Like, you know what I mean? And... and are we going to start throwing horses out all the time for things like that? Uh, you know, I mean, it's a strange one because obviously uh, Lee Mott said, said in the paper today that, you know, obviously Paddy Brennan said nothing happened. Yeah. But, but, you know, this this code in the weighing room of uh, not um, um, giving evidence against uh, fellow jockeys, etc., cetera, mm. um, entitled the stewards to ignore what he said. But it's a little bit, I don't know, this is too far out for me. I mean, when do you stop? Mm. Well, I actually, if you get a chance, have a look at a beginner's chase at Fairy House earlier on this season. Fluair won it, mm. and Grand Paradis uh, jumped the last alongside him. I think Frontal Assault was in the race as well. So Fluair absolutely clattered into Grand Paradis at the last. Now, I mean almost took him out. Mm. There wasn't even a Stewart's Inquiry called. Yeah, exactly. So that'll just show you the difference between the stewarding in Ireland and the stewarding in England at the moment. Jonathan, what did you think? Did you think the right decision was made? I think, yeah, as Keel says, by the letter of the law, the right decision was made, and it's one of those where if it was in football, you'd say you've seen them given. Um, <laughs> they've got to, All right, Gary. They've got to look at the visual versus verbal evidence, and the visual evidence is there was interference at the final flight, which that the interference is interference, but the argument is did it materially sort of affect the placings? I'm not sure, mm. you know? It's one of those, and and I'm not sure I buy the argument of it's not in the spirit of it. It's it's not about spirit and Paddy Brennan saying things in the way. It's about what does the letter of the law say, and by the letter of the law it was interference. Okay, I, I think we know it's utterly pointless that jockeys are in these jurors' inquiries, because really their Completely. opinion doesn't matter. But it is compelling viewing. Like ITV were yeah. in there, and you're watching it, and I loved it, and I think viewers loved it. So it's... It's almost like a catch-22 because we want them there, mm. but it makes no difference that they're there. Well, certainly not in this case because if, no. if, you, take the, <laughs> if you take the verbal, you say, okay, fair's fair, let's, let's split it. But that's a nice idea and it's all well and good, sort of the connections. And they mean well saying, yeah, well, it's, they're both good horses. They both deserve to win it. Let's split everything. But if you've backed one of them and, or if you're the owner of one of them, then you know, it does have pretty big ramifications so you, you've, it's got to be done objectively and transparently absolutely and pick up your racing post today a terrific piece on that whole incident by racing writer of the year Lee Motter said who I've kind of forgiven for winning that award but uh, he did write a lovely piece today and that's why he's writer of the year that's easier right Keels we were we were sitting here yesterday and you were very worried about the Gordon Elliott stable form okay now we can, add, we can add bad luck to yeah, bad form so, there, like, can't we? <laughs> he must feel, he must be waking up this morning and just going, yeah. I'm cursed. What can I do wrong, yeah? What his horses wrong? are running well. So Zana here would have given, no matter what you think, would, would have, have gone given, very close. Would have gone very close. Yeah, would have gone very close. That. Well, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say either way which one would have won. Oh, really? You were that? I wouldn't say either way. Okay. Uh, obviously, Pied Piper dead heated and then was demoted to second. Mm -hmm. Conflated was second to Clander's Oboe. So... They are running quite well. Yeah, no, no, they run. They've all run okay. You can't, you, you, you can't really use the Gordon Elliott not running well angle after seeing day one, can you? Because mm. they have all run well, but it's just having some rotten luck, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, it's. I'd say going home last night. Now he was in Warrera. Absolutely. Form, yeah. Um, Epitant, you questioned the champion hurdle form, and I know you're still not convinced that it was the oh, greatest you know. entry hurdle, but it was a terrific. <coughs> well, performance I mean, look. By 
Well, I don't think what I said was remotely controversial and that it wasn't a good race going into it. I mean, look at it. People kept, people kept coming on to me on Twitter and saying, look at last year's race. That was awful. Right? There were seven horses in last year's race rated at least four pound higher than the second highest rated horses in this race. You know what I mean? Yeah, but so, don't let stats get in the way no, of no, the no, story. No, like. it's just a fact. It's just a fact. Right? Now, there was always the potential uh, for those two to finish first and second because they were the best horses in the race. But both had... Question marks. One stamina, more stamina for Epiton, which she proved without a shadow of a doubt, mm. uh, and the form of the yard. So I thought it was worth taking on. Now I, I actually backed McFabulous <laughs> with a firm offering three places, uh, and well, that was the luckiest third I'll ever have in my entire life. Did you actually collect that money? Uh, I did. Yes. I would have handed it yes, back. Yes, I did. I did. But uh, yes, yeah, so I got out. I got out of it. No, I got. I got it badly wrong. But one thing, right? The time was dead, terribly slow. Here it, was we just go. About, it was just about <laughs> the slowest on the card. Now I think that's because they they went really probably because they went really hard. But you know, I, you know one thing I was told when I was about 16, 17, I'm really getting into racing. Well, I, I love Daintree. I love Daintree. Right? Is never ever go overboard about races after the Cheltenham Festival. Never what? ever go abo- overboard about performances that oh, take place as in after. Form. Okay, yeah. After the Cheltenham Festival. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Uh, you know, so yeah, obviously, yes, she was. She, mm. she was really, really good yesterday. But you know, it still wasn't a great race, and you know, I, I think you know, Honeysuckle would have beaten her easily again yesterday. It wouldn't have been a, 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 any different. Right, you know, she's that, she, all she's done is beat what, what what was there. But before we move on from her, like she probably doesn't get the credit she deserves. She's a champion hurdle winner. She's an umpteen grade ones on her CV. Oh, God, she's yeah, a terrific look, mare. Yeah, no, she is. She is a terrific mare. I still don't believe that she's as good as she was, okay. and I don't think she had to be the way the race was run yesterday. That's all. Okay, no, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Uh, he's king of the clans, Clan de Zobo. Um, I'm actually penning an article at the moment, a column for tomorrow's paper about Paul Nichols, uh, which was supposed to be in uh, before the show, but it, it will be finished after the show. I like. Paul kind of threw his toys out of Pram at Cheltenham when he took all his horses out on day two because of the ground. He only, I think, had six runners over the week. But then you kind of see yesterday and clan his oboe and you go, you know what? He was right. He was actually dead right. And that's why he's champion trainer because he's mm. making big decisions like that that are going to help him become champion trainer. And keeping clan his oboe fresh and potentially Brave Man's game today, it's why he's champion trainer, isn't it? Absolutely. And he's... He makes these decisions famously. He's not going to be swayed by sort of perhaps owners wanting social runners at Cheltenham or this. You know, if he thinks a horse's best target is away from Cheltenham Festival, he will aim them away from the Cheltenham Festival. It's not for him. It's about finding the right race for the right horse, and it's it's hard. It's hard to think of a better sort of target trainer when he pinpoints a race and primes these good horses for good races. Clander's Oboe is a classic one. He's just been geared up towards this beautifully and he's arrived in about as good as form as he could be and he, he was excellent yesterday yeah, I thought watching him at Newbury he was gone at the game well, yeah. I did too yeah. uh, you know I mean I'm you know, I, I, all over him for the King George I was a bit disappointed in him, in him there yeah. uh, and then you've got that um, that race at Newbury and you think well what's he going to do now and I think well you know, now he's going the headgear switch, so Paul Nichols is reaching as well but he's actually very good when he changes headgear around like, you know what I mean and you know I, you know, nobody could have him. He went out at fifteen to two at one point. You've got to remember he was five to two, nine to four. Yeah, you know, in the in the mm. early markets, right? You know, but certainly earlier in the week, right? You know, so nobody wanted him. Um, but it goes to show, drifters win. They do, they certainly do, and Clanders Oval certainly did win. Uh, you shall not pass. Uh, the Fox Hunters yesterday kills. We were well. You convinced me. We thought. Jet was just going to bounce out, make all, job done, three after, to one, collect, he was happy days. Beaten after a fence, wasn't he? Yeah. Just didn't seem to enjoy himself at all, so I don't, you know. You know couldn't hold your hands up there, got that one badly, badly wrong. I mean, you know, we didn't make him 9 or 4, loads of other people agreed, but, you know, he just, he just, he wasn't at the races, was he? But great. I mean, we were shouting on Mr. Maxwell, oh, weren't we? Wouldn't yeah. it have been great? But, you know, he's got a. You know, a very talented, but very quirky horse to ride there, and he was doing really, really well because he was just like holding on to him, holding on to him, and let's go for one run. But um, Bridget Andrews is very good and had a very willing partner as well. Uh, you know, and you know the best horse did win. Yeah, and it was it was a, a good ride from David, and and he's one of them. I remember interviewing him after uh, the the Hunter's Chase at Punchdown last year when he got up to beat Billaway mm. on Bob and Co. Uh, he's just a good guy that doesn't take himself too seriously, and I think. Anybody who didn't have a bet in the race would have been cheering on Cat Tiger. 
No, they would have been. I mean, he's a reporter's dream, isn't he? Because oh. you know any race he's involved in, win, lose or draw, you're going to get some pretty good quotes out of him at the end. Because he is just, he is the sort of the equivalent of a regular guy just doing it, you know, he's doing it. He's, he's involved in elite sport, but it's not, you know, it's not his day job. We must get him on the show. He'd be, he'd good, be good He'd be good here, value. Yeah, he'd be great. Yeah, he'd be great. great. Okay, so your day one highlight for you, Jonathan, was? Uh, I think it would be Klander's Oboe bouncing back like that. We thought he was done, really. So for him to come back at the top level and beat some very good horses was really impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for you, Kills? I haven't really got one. <laughs> no, I mean, the end of it. <laughs> yeah, the end yeah, yeah, yeah. of the, 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 When they crossed the line after the last one, I could go down the pub. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no, I mean, Epitop was ace, wasn't she? I mean, it, 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 it was a good race. It was good competitive racing. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Didn't have a good day punting. Hopefully, it'll be better today. So, me and Keels were working beside each other yesterday, and we were there typing away all day. And I said to Keels, because I'm only over for a few nights, I said, Can we go for a drink after work? Like, just one. No, no, no. I have to go home. I have to go home. And then one of our colleagues, Tom Park, comes up, Keels, do you want to go for a drink? Yeah, let's go. So, uh, that showed me who your favourite. Well, no, it was racing. only because I was going to go straight away, and I thought I was going to have one. But then, obviously. You turned up, and then a couple of others turned up. And it's good fun. There we go. Good That's morning. me all over, I'm afraid. Slight headache this morning. But anyway, it was <laughs> well worth it. So let's preview Ladies' Day at Aintree. This, for anybody going today, and if you're watching and you're going racing today, you are in for a treat, because the atmosphere on this day, I've been there a few times on Ladies' Day, it's just magic, Jonathan, isn't it? It's, just, it's the place to live. Yeah, it is, and it's a very different experience from Cheltenham, as we discussed yesterday. You know, it's sort of, it's almost the party after. Cheltenham's business, for a lot of it feels a bit mm. very business, very, this is it, this is the pinnacle, whereas Aintree's a bit of a party afterwards. But the racing is still incredibly good as well. It is, and we're kicking off with a very competitive handicap hurdle at 1.45. And at the moment, Langer Dan, who came down so early, of course, in the Martin Pipe, is currently Paddy Power's 7-2 favourite. Speech Bubble is 5-1, to one, and it is 8-1 to one Cobbler's Stream. And Phil Dudare. Right, we're going to have to kick off here with Langer Dan. Um who's been, like, Dan Skelton has been incredibly patient with this horse. I think we all know if things go right, he's well handicapped. Is he a bet at 7-2 to two kills? I, I can't get involved at 7-2. to two. It wouldn't surprise me if he won. I mean, you know, he went off 7-2 to two favourite for the Martin Pipe as well, didn't he? Uh, you know, he was around about that price. Um, and obviously the argument that he's well handicapped having finished just a couple of lengths behind Gallop in the Champ in the race last year. I mean, the whole plan was all year long. Uh, to go and have another crack at the Martin Pipe and to you know be brought down, and he did take quite a hefty tumble when I you know went head over heels basically after being brought down. So that's an experience he's got to, he's got to recover from. Probably be fine, but you know we all know that the first run that he had at Taunton was a prep for the Martin Pipe, but it wasn't particularly promising. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just I just wonder whether like, you know we're getting carried away with with that one run at Cheltenham last year and. The other thing is, if the ground dries out a little bit, you know, I actually thought it was quite soft yesterday, so we'll see what it is. It might have been, it might have been the wind, because there was a lot of wind yesterday, but the times were slow. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to wait and see. But he'd have a bit to prove if the ground was to quicken up a bit. OK, so if you're taking on Langer, Dan, currently your 7-2 favourite Paddy Power, what is Paul Keeley like? Well, I like them? horses, you know, I like horses that have been prepped for meetings, and I think Peking Rose has been, uh, because after we won... Um, at Newbury earlier in the season, uh, Fairbill O'Brien said he's an Aintree horse rather than a Cheltenham horse. And he's been beaten twice since then, he made a right mess of the third last at Exeter. Um, but against a horse that's come out and won very easily again since. Uh, and last time he was beaten by Julino Bello, I think it's quite he's pretty good. And I didn't think Paddy Brennan, you know, wasn't, wasn't particularly hard on him once he'd accepted that he wasn't going to win. Like, you know, so he's probably not as far back as nine lengths, uh, um, not as, you know, Nine lengths probably wasn't the true margin. Mm. And if you look last year, last year he ran in a grade two bumper on Grand National Day and he finished second. He split Napper's Hill and Stage Star. Stage Star's like, you know, one four two or something now. Over hurdles running in the grade one on Saturday and Peking Rose is running one one thirty in a handicap. Right, you know, so he's got he's got very, very good bumper form and at the track and a low handicap mark. Interesting, and he's twelve to one currently with Paddy Power. So, Paul Keeley kicks off with a twelve to one shot. What are you going to kick off with? It's rare that we have agreement, but I'm going for Peking Rose as well. Wow. I think there was no a, discussion before the show either. No, no, I just think no plagiarism. Like you say, going going for a, horses that are targeted at races like this, that's a bonus. Um, 
I didn't sort of put me off those last two runs, like you say, made a bit of a mistake, but still finished races well. Uh, and that bum performance is really compelling for me. And I think I, I think a mark of 130 is perfectly reasonable, okay. if not slightly underestimating. So we have got two votes for peaking rows, and I'm actually kicking off with a 25 to 1 outsider, Quinton Damar, okay? who ran a cracker in the Lanzarote, was about two or three lengths down when, when he fell at the last, and then he went to the Martin Pipe. And like, the loose horse was just a pest for the second half of the race for him. And he went from like second or third back to mid-pack, and then had to kind of make up ground coming down the hill. I actually thought he ran a really good race. He's been dropped two pounds. Keelan Woods won the first race yesterday, of course, on, on Miller's Bank, and I think he might do it again. He's 25 to one queen to the mar. I think 133 is a fair enough mark for him. And I know you were tempted yeah, by him. I was con- I, yeah, I did consider him. I backed him earlier in the season. Yeah, he's, he's quite a talented horse. I think flat track will suit as well. Okay, so there you go. There are our selections on the screen for the 145 at Aintree. Moving on to the 220. And this is a corker. It is the top novices hurdle. And at the moment, your even money favourite with Paddy Power is John Bond, the supreme novice hurdle second to the magnificent Constitution Hill. It is 7-2 to about El Fabiolo, and it is 4-1 to one about First Street. Now, before we talk about the action, let's hear the views of Ruby Walsh about El Fabiolo. OK, Ruby, straight to you, uh, because obviously Willie Saddles El Fabiolo, but John Bond clearly the one to beat. Yeah, he is clearly the one to beat. Um, he served up the Dysart Dynamo in the Supreme Novices and kind of maybe exposed himself then to Constitution Hill, who was a runaway winner, but... I still think it was a really solid effort from from John Bond to be best best of the rest, and he definitely sets the standard. But look, I did share a flight over with Paul Town, and I heard him saying in the airport. I didn't ask him, but I heard him saying there's different people asked him looking for his best best chance. He kept putting up El Fabiolo as his best ride this week, and um, you know there's no point in standing around the luggage belt if you're not listening. And I was listening, and I heard Paul Town and put up El Fabiolo, so I'm going to repeat it. There you go, Ruby Walsh via well, Paul Townend via Ruby Walsh at El Fabiolo. Frank at the luggage belt in Liverpool Airport. <laughs> so there you go, folks. That was the views of Ruby Walsh, who was listening to his one-time understudy Paul Townend about El, Fa- El Fabiolo. And you can listen to Ruby and Paddy Canelli and Frank Hickey on the From the Horses Mouth podcast from Paddy Power every day this week. Um, El Fabiolo. We will come back to John Bond in a minute, but you're kind of taking a lot on trust here with El Fabiolo and. Visually, a Tremor on New Year's Day, he was visually very impressive. But you're kind of you're trying to put two and two together and see can you get four somewhere, aren't you? Well, it's a guess, isn't it? But I mean, you know, it's 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 a wide margin win um, against average horses. Was it one twenty something? The yeah, second, the second is okay. Yeah, you know, it's, it, it, you know, okay. The rest are, the, the rest are poor. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, you know, part of me wants to take on John Bond because I can't bring myself to back a horse at even money who got beat twenty lengths at Cheltenham. Like, you know what I mean? Surely there's something between <laughs> Constitution Hill and John Bond. John Bond's not the second best hurdler in, 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 in Britain and Ireland, like, you know, at two miles, like, you know, so. Might uh, he be, though? Uh, but he might be. But he might be. I mean, he, you know, the thing about John Bond is this is such a strange ride at Cheltenham. Yes. I mean, that taking on Dysart Dynamo, uh, I mean, cutting their own throats, it was a bit of a, it was a, bit of a weird one, wasn't it? Uh, you know, I mean, there was there was there was talk about trying to get him cover earlier in the season, and then he ended up having to make the running because nobody wanted to do it against him, and they were trying to get him beat. So to actually set off at a fair old rate of knots uh, was uh, was very strange. Uh, you know, so he could well be better than that. I'm not a hundred percent convinced he's a two miler. I think he wants. I think he wants further. I've backed him for the Turners next year. I think that's. I think that's his perfect race. Um, so we'll wait and see. Obviously, this is a fair speed test. Um, but you know, it's not the, It doesn't look like the deepest race in the world, does it? So it'll be him or El Fabiolo. Um, I always take on the Fabs. Well, you didn't yesterday with Jet. Yeah, well, exactly. Look, look what happened. <laughs> That's why I take him on. <laughs> so you're you're El Fabiolo. I'm a terrible punter at short prices. Oh, yeah? I'm terrible. Yeah, just get rid. Just don't do it. Okay. I, should, I should learn, but you know. 53 now and I still haven't. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things you still need to learn in life. Uh, so it's El Fabiolo for you. And at the prices, do you know what? It's El Fabiolo for me as well because I, I like the fact that he obviously comes in here fresh. Like he's obviously working well that Willie is bringing him over. And it's just, I go back to even the first half of the race at Tremor. Everything was effortless for El Fabiolo. Sometimes you just have to try and trust your eyes. And this time I'm going to trust my eyes. And I think El Fabiolo might be able to beat John Bond. But I think you're going to disagree. Yeah, I mean, we... <laughs> 
I, there's always, we always have this gut instinct to take on the favourite, and really it's not much of a betting heat for me. Um, but if you ask me which horse I think is going to win the race, I think John Bon is just better than the other horses in it. I, uh, there's unknowns about El Fabiola. I think John Bon would have got cl he wouldn't have beaten Constitution Hill, but he would have got a lot closer with a different ride. And I think he lost a shoe as well. I agree with Keels. He is crying out for a trip. And I think if when he goes novice chasing, he will go two and a half. But I just think with this, okay, you've got the question mark about how he comes out of. Cheltenham, but I think he is just, I think he just sets the standard. I think he wins. So sometimes it's just a case of... Keep it simple. Yeah, he's, he's just better. Yeah. He's just better. <laughs> One sentence, he's just better. First Street is crying out for two and a half mile even more than John Bond is. Mm. Like you saw his finishing effort. I mean, it was a good run to state. I mean, if state man's a proper grade one horse, then, you know, you shouldn't rule him out, which is why he's, you know, a clear third favourite. And the drink that you weren't supposed to have last night, mm. uh, Ross Brierley uh, joined us. Mm-hmm. And he's very keen on First Street. That's his, his banker of today. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I backed him. I backed him in the county. And I, you know, again, I was dead keen to take on State Man. That that one run, uh, winning a, a you know a rubbish maiden hurdle. But you know, that one, they know what they got, don't they? And the money was down, and uh, he won quite easily. But First Street did a, did really well. But he was under the pump a long way out. And this is you know, it, it's just indicative of a horse who wants to go further. And I think he has gone further anyway, hasn't he? Before, so he might struggle if they don't go a pace here. Okay, so there you go, folks. That is the top novices hurdle, and we've got an offer from Paddy Power. This Grand National Festival get money back if your horse finishes second, third, or fourth in the 220 on Friday at Aintree. Paddy Power. Now that's a cracking bet if you fancy El Fabiolo. So, uh, yeah, very interesting offer from Paddy's there. So it's two votes for El Fabiolo and one for John Bon in the top novices hurdle from your panel here on Good Morning Aintree. Now, I'm looking forward to this one. This is the 255. It is the Mile Main Novices Chase, and this is magic, boys. We've only got four runners, but they are high-quality quartet keels. Bit of alliteration there. Um, is Well, first of all, we'll have a look at the market, okay? At the moment, Long Press is just about favourite, 6-5 to five with Paddy Power. 6-4 to four Brave Man's Game. Like, Ahoy Senior is now 6-1. to one. Is the market right in that order? Never mind the prices. Are they in the right order at the moment? I think the market's right in, in, in that order because I think Long Press was really impressive uh, at Cheltenham and it's just a very, very good horse. Uh, I do think that Ahoy Senor has looked like an absolute monster every time he's run on a flat left-handed track. You know, he did it last year here over hurdles when thrashing Brave Man's Game. Uh, he did it at Newby when winning by Miles. He did it at Weatherby uh, when uh, winning the Toten. Um, mm. So... You know, if I was having a if I was having a bet in a race, I would end up back in a horse not just because of the prices. And Me the one too. thing about um, Long Press is Venetia Williams. Now she was talking about having runny noses and all that before Cheltenham. She had a cracking Cheltenham. Right, her three horses ran yesterday. They ran deplorably. Mm. Right, and they were beaten 30, 36 less. The horse in the juvenile hurdle was beaten after. Uh, three was be years. And yeah, one was beaten after. Uh, you know, just couldn't even raise a gallop. A yeah. horse that was supposed to be, you know. You know, a similar level to Gaelic Warrior. Mm. So there's a little bit of a worry there. We're talking about you know trainers in form and out of form. Gordon's ran really, really well, and hers ran terrible. Mm. So I'd just be a little bit worried about getting involved in the short price there. Now, you know, we don't, you know, Brave Man's game obviously toyed with a horse in or a Kempton, but this is going the other way round. Mm. Uh, and, I, you know, I do think they're three very, very good horses. I like, I like all three of them, right? You know, and, you know, they are... As I said before, the immediate future of staying chasing in Britain. Mm. Uh, you know, so we hope at least one of them turns out to be top, top class. What's right? your instinct telling you about Brave Man's game? My instinct about Brave Man's game is that he is very, very good. I, I'm not 100% certain he's an out and out stayer. Mm. Just, you know, I, I want to see him do it in a proper race. Uh, you know, not in a slow run race around Newbury, uh, you know, or when a horse in yours making mistake after mistake at Kempton and that turned into a speed test. I think the horse in will make this a proper test this time. Passing the stands with a circuit to run, who's on fr who's in front? A horse in your. Okay. You think he'll set the pace and yeah. who'll sit second? I don't know. Non press probably. Mm. If he's still there. I just have a, I just seriously worried about a, just how they ran yesterday. Okay. So at, at the moment with Paddy Power, Ahoy Senior is six to one, twenty to one Fury Road. Like that's a big price as well, isn't it? 
He's a very good horse, but I do think he's going to be behind. You know, he's going to be he's going to struggle to keep in in with these. So you're going to have a small I'm going to have, I'm going to have a small, a uh, yeah, I'd have a, a couple of quid on a high senior. Yeah. yeah, I hope at least one or three turns out to be top class. I hope it's I hope it's long press. I'm a massive fan of long press, mm. Mm. but stable form is just beginning to worry me. I know our our friend Tom Siegel, Mr. Pricewise, thinks long press is going to win the bit the next five Gold Cups. He's a massive <laughs> fan of long press, so he is. So uh, best of luck today, Tom. Uh, interesting race, Jonathan. Yes. Are you confident that you found the right one? Yeah, I'm confident. Oh, I go think for it. with long long press, as we say. Looking at that, the way Venetia Williams runners ran yesterday, that puts me off. That was a fairly attritional uh, RSA at Cheltenham. And uh, while he was very impressive, and I think he is the best horse in this race as well, I just think looking at the preparations coming into it, I prefer the fact that Brave Man's game is fresh. Mm -hmm. That decision to sidestep what would have been a fairly grueling race at Cheltenham is probably going to, as we've seen with Clan de Zobra, he's going to be, he's going to have been prime for this now. He's been, ever since pulling out of Cheltenham, of course, this is. So he'd have been prepared for this. Um, I think the track's going to suit. And I just think he's the one. Ahoy Senor at the prices, but Brave Man's game looks the most likely winner to me. Fairly mm. confident. It's going to be a cracker, isn't it? I oh. think that, that like, the, of all the races over the three days, this is probably the one that excites us, excites us the most. Well, we wanted to see all three against each other at Cheltenham, didn't we? Yeah. Mm. Uh, and then Brave Man's game came out. So now we've got it. Um, we know that Long Press is the best uh, out of those two based on Cheltenham form, but we also expect to hoist Senor to be better on a flat track. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's fascinating. I think with a high Senor, I think the thing is, like, his jump, and he made two absolutely desperate errors at Cheltenham. Mm. And if he didn't make the mistake, especially probably at the third last, mm. I think he wouldn't have had to work so hard to make up the ground in Long Press. So it's going to be, if he puts in a slick, clean round of jumping, it's yeah. going to be very interesting. The thing about, you know, Lompress was going away again at the finish, though, wasn't he? He was, yeah. Uh, you know, he did, you know, if he's if he's fit and well, mm. then he's still the one to beat for me. But I'm worried whether he's actually fit and well. I know. You know what I mean? So that's... So there you go. You cool. see our selections on the screen there. There's two votes for a high senior and one for Brave Man's Game. But I think me and Keels are both in agreement. This is one of these ones where we're tipping a high senior primarily because of the price. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, we're probably going to go, oh, oh, of course, Lampress could win. You should only have a tip because of the price anyway. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so six to one. We think it's too big about a high senior. That is the magic mile away. It is the 2.55 at Aintree. Moving on to the 3.30. I hate when they put those that time together three and thirty like th is for us irish people is really really <laughs> tough okay so the 330 at entry is of course the marsh chase and Fakir de Dares is currently our five to four favorite with paddy power it's 15 to 2 saint calvados it is eight to one hitman nine to one fun and bowl savola and 12 to one captain guinness and mr fisher my old buddy old pal jonathan we're going to kick off with you here first as rock solid favorites go this is as rock solid as you can get, in my opinion. Fact of the Darius. Am I wrong? I'm not convinced. Oh, God. I'm not convinced. I mean, he did it well at Ascot. I was there that day, actually, and they were really pleased that he finally got that top... You know, he's finally sort of delivering on the promise. But I just think... I don't think he's a real superstar in the way that a Long Press or, or a John Bon is. I just think he is there to be... So there to be taken on. John Bon at the moment, mate. He's there to be taken on. <laughs> And um, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I, I'm going to take him on with St. Calvados. Okay, why, why can you not believe you're saying that? Because it's hard to... I always struggle to back horses who have had a, a poor last run, and he was, obviously, Ascot is one of those where you either you forgive it or you write him off completely. But mm. I think if we go back one more to his run in the King George, he obviously didn't quite get home, but he ran... Actually, it was a ridiculous ride. Yeah, of a, of a bad... <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, but I it, love was, Gavin, it was. It was a ridiculous ride. It wasn't the best ride, put di diplomatically. Yeah, you can he, paraphrase from me there. He obviously didn't quite stay. I think this is his trip, and I think, at, again, at the prices, I think he's the one. He was a lot bigger before Tom Segal tipped him up. I was going to say, yeah, pick up today's race and post, and Tom Siegel makes a, a similar case to yourself. Um, yeah. He thinks this is his, going to be his big day. And at the prices, you think 15 to 2 is a bit of value? I think so still, yeah. I just think you've got to have a go at the favourite in this one. I don't think he's rock solid. It's been a massive turnaround in the betting. Uh, and, you know, in a, a, a re sort of shuffling of the pack of being behind Fakir Duderis because I mean, the market looked all wrong to me originally because I think we've seen through Funham Bill Sibler um, that he hasn't quite stayed 
two and a half mile, the two times around. It looked like it was running all over first flow and everything in the Peterborough chase and, uh, and, and stopped. Uh, and obviously at Cheltenham, um, didn't get it going at all. So if, if it's hard work out there, I can't see him staying. Again, it's Benicia Williams. You've got to worry about the form. Uh, and, you know, did, the thing is, you can pick holes in so many of Fakir Dudero's rivals. That's the thing. All mankind seems to have lost the plot completely uh, since his good early season form when he won the, uh, the old Roan. Um, Mr. Fisher always makes mistakes. So where where so are we with Mr. Fisher? I mean, I've given like I, Mr. Know, Fisher I've and given Mr. Coffee running on the same Mr. card Fisher for me does is not, like... Mr. Fisher does not jump well enough in grade one level. He will belt at least one. I mean, you remember he ran in this last year, and he looked—he looked like after 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 his uh-huh. Cheltenham disaster, he looked like he was really enjoying himself in front, and then and suddenly then bang, wallop. he hit one, and the next one he was gone. Like you know what I mean? And I think that's a bit of a problem with him. So Roy was actually third favourite in the in the anti post betting originally, yeah. and it's drifted right out. But this is his, you know, forty fourth run of his life, and the first one beyond two mile one furlong. So it's a guess. I mean, okay, so say, that's all the ones that can't it was, win. It was Epiton's first run over two and a half mile yesterday. So I mean, yeah. it can happen, but he's ten. Um, so I'm looking at it and I think, you know, I think Fakir Dodero is a win. But I, think there was, I thought there was some value behind him. Now I can see the case for St. Calvados, but it was another one that you've got to forgive. Mm. Whereas Paint the Dream took a handicap apart at Newbury last time, won by 15 lengths on the bridle easily, returned a racing post rating of 164, which I think is just two pounds below the best of, uh, you know, some of the some of the others outside of Faku do dairy here, like you know, and it just puts him on the premises for it in the frame. And what I've done is I've backed him without uh, Faku do dairies, and I've had a little bit because you know the number of times I've backed horses place only or, or without the fav, and they've won, and I haven't had a bean on, and it's just absolutely sickened me. I mean, the, my, the worst one ever was Arabian Queen when when she won the Nunthorpe. Um, I backed her at nine to four. I finished in the first Jordan four. Jordan Mott, I'd imagine. Nine, yeah, sorry, did Jordan Mott. Didn't Jub win Mont, the non-tour, yeah, anyway. Didn't win the non-tour, no, sorry, Jordan Mott, yeah. But it was, beat, it was that meeting. Beat uh, Golden beat Horn. Beat Golden Horn, mm. yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I backed her at nine to four to finish in the first four <laughs> in a seven-runner race. Uh, you know, and she won it, and I was sick as a pig. So so I always have a tiny little bit on. I don't really expect him to beat Fakir do Dairies, but I think he's got a far better chance of beating the frame uh, and beating the others than his odds suggest. Okay, there you go. He's a 25 to 1 shot with Paddy Power on the nose. Uh, paint the dream for Keels. And I'm, I'm extremely boring. I think Fakir that there is. Skip Cheltenham this year. And to me, even the form with Alaho was quite strong. We've seen Alaho has absolutely annihilated horses over the last couple of years. So I think Fakir that there is, is the one solid favourite on the card today. That is your Mars Chase at 3.30. Moving swiftly on. To the top, and we're back over the national fences, and it's at four oh five. And Mister Coffee is favourite. Holy God, seven to one with Paddy Power, Mister Coffee. Uh, Mac uh, is eight to one at the moment. Royal Rendezvous is ten to one. Your Galway Plate winner, and it is eleven to one bar, which includes Senior Citizen Roy Keels. <sighs> Mister Coffee. Go. Okay, so so we, we we all have a bit of a laugh and a joke. He, he's great crack. Like in fairness, hey, he makes the world a more amusing horse, place. Does he? Mr. He's Coffey. a cracking horse, isn't he? Obviously, you know. I mean, I mean Nicky Henderson was so excited about him early in the season. I mean, he jumped really, jumps really well. Like you know, he thought this this could be, you know, a graded performer, and he sort of let him down a little bit. But he did say that, you know, he's probably not as fast as we thought he was, and mm. he's a bit more of a stayer. And, it looked like that for such a long way in the Kim Muir, didn't it? Like, you know, and then he just got outstayed. Did he get outbattled? I don't know. But he did remarkably well. You know, he almost got brought to his he knees at yeah. the, the second fence. Nearly got brought down. And that's it, all part of the fun, though. Yeah, but that sort, of thing, that sort of thing doesn't seem to bother him in no, the slightest. I mean, if you go back and look at that sand match, you will never ever see a horse come down so hard and heavy on a fence and make such a big hole and not even break stride. Mm. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in Tank. racing. I keep going back and watching it. Like, you know what I mean? You just think you cannot do that. You're in bed at night. He just, like a... <laughs> just jogs on. Like, you know what I mean? As, as, as though nothing Nothing to see here. Like, you know, yeah, it's just amazing. So, so yeah, he's, a, he, he's an old favourite. But Nicky Henderson said, you know, it wasn't the plan. He said, but we tried him over the fences and he seemed to love it. So, so you know, he could still be very... Very well handicapped. There won't be any excuses on the distance um, front this time because he's mm. coming back to two five. It could prove perfect. So yeah, give him another go. Uh, you are giving him another. I go. am definitely. Giving are you him really? Another. I am definitely giving him another go. I love him. Yeah, yeah. We've got one more go. With him. I've also backed Tamarok de Mathan, uh, who was second to paint the dream at Newby. Just thought he ran into one there, um, in danger a little bit of becoming a bit disappointing. But he did pull five lengths clear of the rest. 
Uh, and I think his shape there was like, you know, another furlong could have helped because he was going away from the others at the line. So I'd give him a shot if he gets around, but I think Mr. Coffey's the one to beat. You're putting a lot of uh, trust in the painted dream, Tamarock the Matlam. Well, I am, yeah. Newbury. I am. <laughs> could be a big double. Yeah, it could be. could be. Right, Jonathan, Mr. Coffey, you get the casting vote. Oh, God. Um, I, he's good fun to watch. Yeah. That is true. But I just think I can't have a sort of quirky jumper coming over these fences. And I know Henderson's tried. I've heard Hen Henderson say this horse loves the fences with sort of might bite and cross countries and things like that. And it's all willing, it's one thing to do it at home and another to do it at full tilt in a race at Aintree. So I'm going to go with Royal Rendezvous at a slightly bigger price, just to prove I don't just back short price favourites. Um, I just think he's a classy horse, obviously second in the Clonmel Oil. I like a good solid jumper going over fences like this. He's been very fluent and he's likely to go off in front, which is no bad thing when there's potentially a little bit of, co when there's Mr. Coffee jumping alongside <laughs> you. It doesn't, yeah. it might be quite a good thing to stay well clear and get out in front a little mm. way. And I can just see him really sort of making it a, making it a battle. So Royal Rendezvous for Jonathan Harding. And your your first choice is Mr. Coffee. You have a chance to Mr. change your Coffey. mind there. You're st you're going to stay loyal. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to see Mr. Coffee, Coffee win. I think he deserves oh, it'd be a great a story, one. wouldn't it? It would be a great story. It is Palmer's Hill for me, though. I think Palmer's Hill is still a well handicapped horse. I would forgive what I saw at Ascot. I'm willing to forgive, and I think if he does take to it, and we don't know if they're going to take to it. You know, you're guessing. I think if he does take to it, I think Palmer's Hill was twenty to one last night. He's now fourteen to one with Paddy Power. I think he's got a big chance. That was your top one, which includes Mr. Coffee. Enjoy. You're Mr. Coffee because it's always a compelling watch wherever Mr. Coffee turns up. Moving on to the 440, and it's a Seft and Novice Hurdle, and at the moment, Bambridge is your 5 2 favourite, of course, your winner of the Martin Pipe at the Cheltenham Festival. It is 11 2 Gelino Bello. It is 11 2 also Sky Tastic, which has been a little bit of money for. Crystal Gorley is 7 1, and it is 12 1 bar. So the Martin Pipe often throws up a proper Grade 1 horse. We, we've seen it over the years with a few Willies who went on to run in Gold Cups. Obviously, Gallop and the Shams won the race. B Bambridge, you tipped at the Cheltenham Festival. You did, I remember, didn't you? Yeah, finally got a winner. You did. Uh, do you think After he's stack of able to... Yeah, uh, he could be... Make the step up? He could do. I don't, know, I don't think he's unreasonably priced, but he's, 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 he's going further up in trip, isn't he? Uh, you know, and... You know, I don't... I'm not 100% certain, certain about him at the trip. I think it's quite a deep, I think it's quite a deep race. Um, you know, I like, I like Jelena Bello. Um, I became very, very close to tipping him. He looked really good when he won here uh, earlier in the season. And he probably ran into a very good horse against Blazing Cal a couple of times. And I actually thought he got outstayed at Cheltenham, but then when he ran in the, uh, uh, when he ran in the Lanzarote, he looked like he wasn't far enough. So, you know, he's going up again. But the more I looked at it, and I came down to Crystal Glory. Now, he was the only horse that could go with Hillcrest. Uh, basically, ran on in, into second. He, yes, he was beaten. He was beaten eight lengths in the end. Uh, and Hillcrest bombed out badly in the Albert Park. Ah, you but, can forget about that. But whatever he did at Cheltenham, he was a very good horse that day at Haydock. Had a lot of all the speed figures, men uh, uh, waxing lyrical about him. I'm not sure that Crystal Glory wanted to ground that deep anyway, but... He was, you know, everything else got beat 40 odd lengths and he was he, he was only beaten eight, so I think that's a pretty solid piece of form. Uh, and I, I think he'll be in the frame again at the very least. So it's Crystal Glory for Keels. It is Jolino Bello for me. I think I think this is another master stroke by Nichols, keeping him fresh for this. And I think I think Aintree is made for Jolino Bello. Flat track, three miles, happy days, Jolino Bello, am I right? No, I'm, I'm, uh, and I promise we didn't exchange notes because I arrived slightly late, but I have you also... You have beautiful notes. Show the camera there. <coughs> look at this hand, right? Know. Which camera this do you is... need? You won't see that. There, look. Can you see that? Can you see that? Someone tweet, tweet me and I'll share them. You have, you have glorious handwriting, Jonathan. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. It's the nicest thing well, ever said to me. What does the handwriting tell us anyway? I'm, I can't read. No, I... Yeah, no exchange of notes, but crystal glory for me. I think there's question marks over the trip for a few of these. And you've got, in, what, in crystal glory, you've got an out-and-out -out stayer who's finished behind a very good horse on very testing ground in Hillcrest uh, for a yard that's had a, had a great season. I, ju I just think each way, certainly, a very good shout. I was slightly backed in now. But, yeah, um, it's been well back seven to seven to one now. Uh, Crystal Glory, uh, the vote of Paul Keeley and Jonathan Harding, and it is Jolino Bello for me. Now, before we get to the best bet 
of the entire Grand National Meeting, which comes in the 5.15. And this is my banker of the whole week. So we're, we're going to come to it, but we're going to uh, listen to the, to the views of Matt Chapman first, because Matt Chapman has got his banker of the day. Hello everyone, Matt Chapman here on Good Morning Entry with my nap for Paddy Power on day two of the Grand National fixture. It'll be Lom Presse in the big novice chase. I thought he was superb in the Brown Advisory at Cheltenham and I love the way he scampered clear when asked for more effort. Lom Presse to see off Brave Man's game and Ahoy Senor at Aintree. Go on, Matt. Hopefully he doesn't fall overboard anyway. Um, we'd all be jumping in to save him, wouldn't we? Uh, Lam Presse for Matt. Yeah, he's, uh, he's due... I'll throw, he's... Him a, I'll throw him a brick or two. <laughs> uh, he's, he's, having a, he's having a good day there. He's, a, he's on the boat. Uh, Lam Presse for him, but uh, my, 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 my strongest fancy of the whole meeting runs now. In the 5.15 is the conditional jockeys... Handicap hurdle. At the moment, Whizkid is your 4 to 1 favourite with Paddy Power, 6 to 1 Washington, 13 to 2 Home Public, and 15 to 2 Richmond Lake. So I'm going to keep viewers because like, they're obviously mad to know what I'm mad about, but I'm going to keep them guessing for a while. <laughs> you have a really strong fancy in this race as well. well which strong is fancy not my as well. And, you know, well, I, 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 a, a proper wealth warning to punters here because Tom, Tom Siegel's tips as well in price wise, and when we tip the same horse, we've got a dreadful record. Shh. <laughs> like, you know, but, uh, don't tell viewers no, that. No, 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 because we never talk about it. We, you know, we never ever discuss it. We just you find out what we've tipped. No, 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 we get on great. Like, yeah, but we make a point of not discussing anything with okay. each other. But we both came down on that. We both came down on Whiz Kid. Now uh, he won a sixteen runner handicap in, at San Clue on the flat last year. Got a race approach rating of one hundred and three, and I think his France Gallup handicap rating would be about ninety eight uh, on the flat. And He's gone to Richard Newland, who for him right in at the deep end against Constitution Hill in the Tolworth Hurdle on his hurdles debut on bad ground, didn't handle it, tailed off, uh, you know, but then came out and won two Mickey Mouse races, uh, you know, Ludlow and Catrick, I think it was, uh, very, very easily. Uh, there's nothing the handicapper could do, can't rate him really highly on what he's beaten. So he gets in here off a mark of 125. Well, you know, if you were... If you're 100 horse on the flat, you should be at least 140 over hurdles if you can translate all your, all, all your ability. And his jumping ability was there. You know, he reaches a couple of times, but he does, he does attack them. Uh, you know, so it just looks to me like it could be potentially very, very well handicapped. And a flat track obviously suits. I mean, he was a much bigger price yesterday, obviously, for one. Mm, uh, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be rushing in, but it wouldn't surprise me if he just back out to, you know, 11 or 2, something like that. And, I'm scared and now. Backable. I'm scared now. Have you backed him already? I have backed him already. What price have you backed him at? I couldn't tell you that. That's okay. not that big. Sevens, I think. Okay. Okay, I'm very scared now. Very, very scared. You've uh, you have me petrified, Keels. Uh, Jonathan, please you tell me you got this one right. You're going to have to start coming to me first, and then people accuse Keels of copying me. <laughs> <laughs> because, I, <laughs> because, yeah, I landed on Wizkid as well, because I just think um, achieved a decent level on the flat, as shown he's translated that over hurdles as well. And I think a mark of one two five is incredibly lenient. But if I were to go for another, I think Lively Citizen's fairly solid option as well. He's worth another look. So you have both spoken for what two, three, four minutes, and you haven't even mentioned the winner yet. I, I'm utterly convinced that Washington is really well handicapped. He's rated 127. Okay, he's been absolutely crying out to be buried in a big field. He's he's ran in like real. Small field races. Uh, I thought last time at Sudley, actually, he actually was quite impressive. He was long odds on, but he was actually quite impressive because he had to make his ground up on the inside, and he quickened right away. He he look, he was entitled to win the race, but he did win it. The form behind, I like to move it in a three runner race at Cheltenham. I know it's only a three runner race, and he finished second. There was only two finishers, so he basically finished last because there was a faller at the last. But he was only beaten a couple of lengths. I thought he was actually coming back, and I like to move it at, at the line. And this, of course, was the infamous race where. My banker of the meeting last year was in this race as well. It was a horse called Copperless that was trained by Ollie Murphy, who came there absolutely tanking at second last and came down. So I think Ollie has had this race in mind for Washington all season. I think he, he knows that he's probably a flat track horse and a speed, jumping, cover, big field, 127. I'm a Washington man, Keels. Got a chance, but I mean, you know, didn't you say uh, you, you spoke to Ollie Murphy about your two fancies and the it other is. one was Gunsight Ridge and look yeah. what happened to that, you know what I mean? I so, 
what happened to, what did happen to him yesterday? God, oh, I don't he know. Beaten like... very early, wasn't he? Uh, you know, always worries me when horses are beaten very early for no apparent reason. Yeah. Like you know, but yes, I backed. I actually backed Washington against. And I like to move it earlier in the season. You know, I can I can definitely see the case for him. Mm. Yeah, he's definitely a horse with potential. But you're a whiz kid, man. Uh, I'm a whiz kid, man. Can't get off him. And you're a whiz kid, man. I'm a whiz kid. You are a whiz kid, and I am a Washington man. I think Washington is the best bet on Ladies Day at Aintree. So that 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 brings us in nicely into our naps of the day, and of course, mine is Washington because uh, I think. The best is going to be served up last year, Kills in the 5.15. Your nap of the day, Jonathan? John Bond. I just think he wins. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I think Thanks he's the that. best horse in the race. You know what it is, don't you? It's not Whiskey, is it? Mr. Coffee. No, it's not. It's Mr. Not. Coffee, it's, yes. No, it's not. Mr. Coffee, yeah. You can't not, Mr. Coffee. <laughs> he won't be out of frame, will he? He'll be there. Yeah, he's Mr. Coffee. Of course he can be out of frame. He'll do what he wants to do. He's never out of frame. Yeah. He'll be there. Is he really your strongest fancy today, Mr. Yeah, Coffee? I think I actually think he'll win, yeah. I do. <laughs> God, I hope he does. So there you go. You can see it on the screens. Beautiful pictures of the two boys. Terrible one of me. Uh, seven to one, Mr. Coffee is Paul Keeley's banker. Even money, John Bond. Jonathan Harding is playing it safe, but uh, a win is a win is a he win, is a Jonathan. It's a terrible picture. You know, it's like you've got a golf it ball is, in it, your mouth. Yeah, it does. It's an absolutely <laughs> awful picture. That shit. Look, look at the difference now in reality. Look at me now. No, I think it's a very similar picture, actually. Uh, that's the nap. So now is the important bit, boys, right? Our charity bet, 100 quid, courtesy of Paddy Power, of course, gave us uh, th- uh, five to one yesterday about Jet, oh, which uh, never piece. took off yeah. at all, really. Um, right, discussion time. I think we're going to come to blows here. You, you, you would probably, would you nominate John Bond for the charity bet? Not at evens. I'd probably no, go no. Whiskid now, but you're not going to like that. No. What are, you, what are you thinking? We can't go Mr. Coffee. Mr. Coffee. How, are we going Mr. Coffee? Mr. Coffee. Or Peking Rose. We both like Peking Rose. Yeah. Now, I really want to overrule here and go Washington. I really do, but... You can do whatever do you it. want. You're, no, I can't. You're, you're the no, we're a team. I'm not a captain. I'm a terrible <laughs> captain. I'm like Harry Maguire. Um, will we go with Mr. Coffee? Uh, Keynes, I think you're going to have a good day, right? Coffee we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. I'm ashamed of myself. Coffee. We're going to go with Mr. Coffee. Seven to one, Paddy Barrett. They're going to give us tens. Mr. Coffee, I can't believe this is happening, but it is. When you see Nico climbing out of the fence at the first. <laughs> he could just get up to the fence and go, nah, don't fancy this at all, couldn't he? But anyway, hopefully he'll, 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 be a good, he'll be a good watch anyway. Mr. Coffee is a charity bet. Ten to one, Paddy Power have generously given us for charity for Mr. Coffee. So hopefully we will raise some much needed funds for our charity. Did you just make that up or is he actually on the line? He is, yeah. I have Paddy. I have a, I have a <laughs> private line to Paddy here, so I have, yeah. Yeah, Speed we're never dial. too far away. Um, so, Ladies Day, Keels, you looking forward to it? What's the uh, plan for the day? Yes. Um, I've actually got a plumber putting a new bath in, so I've got to go, go get home, and hopefully he's done it by the time racing starts. Okay. New yeah. bath? Yeah. Oh. Is it, is it a, a present for oh, we had one of those. Or? We had one of those jacuzzi bath things, and you know, and my mate said, don't get one of them, the pumps will go, and when it goes, it always goes in the wrong place, and it did. So, I mean, the whole thing needed to come out to repair it, so I thought I might as well get a new one. Are you more a bath man or a shower man? Uh, there's not enough room for me and water, mate, so I'm a shower man. <laughs> it's cutting edge insight here. <laughs> Little did I think we'd be talking about our, uh, our cleaning techniques. Uh, Jonathan, your, your plan for today, you're on a reporting shift, aren't you? Yeah, I'm working away in here, um, looking after stuff that breaks out from Aintree remotely. Okay, yeah. Looking forward to it? Very much so, yeah. It's good. Good excuse to watch the uh, racing alongside you. And it is Grand National Day, obviously, tomorrow. But, uh-huh. but today really does kind of give you the appetite for Grand National. It's, it's great racing. There's lots of I've great I've got ones. miles more of a buzz for today than I had for yesterday. I mean, I hope that still counts by the time <laughs> we get to the last. But, but, but I have, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I think I, I've got far more, so, so stronger fancies. I mean, I love big handicaps anyway, don't I? Like, you know, so there's a, and there's a few of them on the card. But... Uh, but yeah, I'm 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 much more into this this day than I was, and I'm massively into Saturday. Fancy loads on Saturday. Do you? And yeah, you're back yeah. with us tomorrow. I am coming back. And tomorrow. you're back with us tomorrow. Bright and early. Bright and early, and I will be back tomorrow. And we've also got our betting editor, Keith Melrose. He's going to be here in the studio. We're going to be four tomorrow, so we are. Yeah, because it's Grand National Day. It's a big one. Uh, we'll be back with you tomorrow morning at half eight, of course, till half nine, previewing all the action on Grand National Day. But it is Ladies' Day at Liverpool. This was Good Morning Aintree. I've been David Jennings. He's been Jonathan Harding. He's been Paul Keeley. Thanks to our sponsors, Paddy Power. And thanks for watching.